depth of field is the extent or amount an image is sharp from front to back. It is variable, governed by aperture and lens choice. Outside depth of field, the image is unsharp, but inside it is sharp. By controlling depth of field, the photographer can create a sharp foreground, such as a flower, against a background that is unsharp, making it stand out. Once mastered, depth of field is an extremely creative tool. Basically, a large aperture decreases depth of field. A small aperture increases it. Furthermore, a wide-angle lens increases depth of field at any aperture setting. But a telephoto, that does the opposite. It decreases it. Aperture settings and lens choice are controlled by the photographer to create different effects. Although others have tried, I don't think really it is possible to produce a chart showing every variation. So far, so good. But now we come to sensor size, for which there is no universal agreement. A full-frame camera has a sensor size similar to 35mm film. Therefore, its standard lens has a focal length of around 50 millimeters. Micro Four Thirds camera sensors are roughly half the size of full frame. Therefore, a standard lens for MFT has a focal length of 25 millimeters, giving more depth of field. A lens with a short focal length, that is a low number, extends depth of field at any aperture. When photographing the same subject with standard lenses, micro four thirds images will have more depth of field than full frame because the focal lengths of their lenses are shorter. These are not the only sensor sizes used in cameras, so other variations apply. With each aperture increment from factor 2.8 through to f22, depth of field increases by stages. There is no fixed amount. Now that depends on lens choice, and if using a zoom, it will adjust every time the control is changed, even the slightest amount between wide angle and telephoto. Therefore, as we have seen already, a wide angle optic increases depth of field at any aperture setting, a telephoto reduces it. I did not give any focal length because that depends on the format, whether full frame, micro four thirds or something else. To be really creative with depth of field, there is no alternative to practice makes perfect, and that of course takes time. There is more. Whatever the camera focuses on, depth of field extends twice as much behind the subject as in front. This is very critical for close-ups, because depth of field is greatly reduced at any setting. For this shot of a thistle taken with a micro four-thirds camera, I used f5.6 to make sure that the whole thistle is sharp. Tweaking the amount of depth of field with a zoom, eventually settling on 100 millimeters, that is 200 for a full frame camera, to ensure that the background is out of focus. How do I know where to set the controls? Experience, which of course cannot be taught. In addition to creating a narrow depth of field, the opposite can be done. F11 and a wide-angle lens will create an enormous depth of field regardless of format. However, if autofocus settles on infinity, depth of field is wasted. Why? Well, remember, depth of field extends twice as much behind the focus point as in front. Therefore, at infinity, it is wasted, risking an unsharp foreground. Answer? 
bring the point of focus forward to between 50 and 100 feet. It doesn't have to be accurate, and neither does it matter if you aren't focusing on anything. This brings the foreground into sharp focus, but keeping the background sharp. This is known as the hyperfocal distance, creating the greatest depth of field according to aperture and lens choice. When creating the hyperfocal distance, if the aperture is larger, the amount of depth of field is reduced. Go the other way to a smaller aperture and it is increased. Change to a standard or telephoto lens, prime or zoom, and depth of field is again reduced, but increased with a wide-angle lens. An understanding of depth of field allows the photographer to create sharp photographs that seem impossible. When inside a church or cathedral, having to handhold, Micro Four Thirds technology comes into its own. It allows me to create a generous depth of field even at f4 or 3.5. This is more difficult with larger formats, unless a tripod is used. Now the photographer can use a smaller aperture to extend depth of field with a longer shutter speed that cannot normally be handheld. But Olympus image stabilizers have changed even that. I still have to be precise as to where I focus by observing the one-third, two-thirds rule, that is, the hyperfocal distance by focusing about one-third into the image so that everything is sharp from front to back. It still takes a bit of practice, even with MFT 